Madam Vice President, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, it is my distinct honor to introduce His Excellency Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, the President of the Republic of Kenya, to address the general debate of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly through a pre-recorded statement. I thank you. The President of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly, Your Excellency Valkan Boskar, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I'm indeed delighted to participate in this 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Despite the unusual the circumstances that we meet, circumstances created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me take this opportunity, Mr. President, to thank you and to congratulate you on your election. And I wish you a productive and successful 75th session and assure you of Kenya's full as well as constructive support. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate your predecessor, His Excellency Professor Tijani Mohammed Bandai for ably steering the 74th session of the General Assembly during this very, very difficult season. He ensured that notwithstanding the difficulties of the pandemic, the work of the United Nations continued. Mr. President, the 75th anniversary is a moment to reflect on the journey that we have taken. It is a moment to introspect, to establish if the anchor still holds or if our community of nations has become unanchored by the challenges of our time. This is an occasion to reflect on our world and its institutions. Have, relations and, have our relations and institutions been refined by experience and the passage of time, or have our institutions become battered and left not fit for purpose? At 75, the United Nations is older than most of its member states, and more importantly, older than over 96% of our global population. A clear majority of the global population today cannot relate to the circumstances of its founding. Yes, the United Nations in its birth brought rules and hope for a world in ruins. That was seven and a half year, decades ago. But what does it bring to the world today? 75 years ago, delegates from 50 nations who had endured immense disruption and suffering seized the opportunity to chart a bold new course for mankind. They were determined to save future generations from the scourge of war, and in so doing, they gifted us a timeless charter that has remained our shared framework of international cooperation. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion of the 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations, we, the people of the United Nations, must rekindle the idealism, will, and spirit of the San Francisco Conference that founded our great organization. Today, mankind is confronted by complex, multifaceted, and gravely serious challenges. Across the world, we are witnessing constant disruptions that are generating great anxiety, uncertainty, and unpredictability. The COVID-19 pandemic best defines the challenges of our time a challenge that affects us all, a challenge 
that we can only overcome if each one of us succeeds. The COVID-19 pandemic and other contemporary challenges, including the climate and biodiversity crisis that we face, are growing geostrategic tensions, social as well as economic inequalities, the crisis of legitimacy and governance, as well as vulnerabilities of our digital world, have indeed redefined the imperative for multilateral action. Kenya believes strongly that if we remain anchored in multilateralism and with unity of purpose, if we are much more agile in embracing change and positive transformations, if we, may, if we remain rooted in a rule-based international system and act innovatively and selflessly, we can transcend our challenges and secure lasting peace and prosperity for all. This firm persuasion is born of our own experience and evolution as a nation. Much like the United Nations, our country was founded on the ideals of liberty, unity, rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, grounded on human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, and good governance. I believe these are all shared global values. And Kenya acknowledges that we've had our challenges in meeting these, but that doesn't change the vision that we have for the future. We have worked, all these issues have worked for us in our domestic context, and I believe that they will serve the United Nations well, and we are confident that our community of nations can do far much more collectively than any one country can ever do alone. Your Excellencies, the theme of our 75th Assembly, namely, the future that we want, the United Nations that we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism is most appropriate and indeed timely. It speaks not only to the urgent need to review our actions at both national and global levels, but also responds to the pressing demand for effective multilateral action within a rule-based international system. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic should give fresh impetus to our collective efforts to strengthen international cooperation. This global pandemic has deepened, unfortunately, existing inequalities, hitting the poorest and most vulnerable communities the hardest. It has created an unprecedented synergy of challenges and demonstrated the limits of our institutions. There is therefore an urgent need to improve readiness in the area of global crisis management, but more importantly, to effectively take urgent, coordinated, and collective measures to build resilience that would insulate our societies and our economies against the adverse effects of such pandemic and crisis. Mr. President, in Kenya, we have had to undertake special and targeted efforts. A national multi-agency team on COVID-19 is in place to ensure such appropriate interventions. We have revamped and expanded our national and county healthcare systems. The interventions that we have taken have targeted the old and the vulnerable, the unemployed and our youth, and specific programs to keep them healthy and productively engaged. We have also recognized how this pandemic has in itself produced the challenges of gender inequality and more so gender violence. 
We have introduced financial and tax interventions to keep the economy and businesses viable and solvent. And like everyone else, introduced social health measures, including cessation of travel, social distancing, the wearing of masks, and improving hygiene for all. And this has been achieved to the best of our abilities within an environment of constitutional civil liberties and rights to prosperity and development of all our citizenry. At the continental level, Mr. President, working with the African Union, I have been involved personally in guiding collective continental actions together with my fellow heads of state and government who are members of the African Union Bureau. We adopted a continental COVID-19 mitigation strategy, which has had great success in coordinating continental efforts to prevent severe illness and death from COVID-19, as well as minimizing social and economic disruptions. Your Excellencies, what we have learned in the last six months is that no country, and I repeat again, no country can manage a crisis of this magnitude on its own. We have had to work collectively in order to build back better. We therefore call upon the global community to enhance cooperation and assistance to developing countries in vulnerable situations so as to bolster their economies and health care systems and to achieve universal health care coverage as envisioned in the 2019 UHC political declaration. Mr. President, this assembly is the pinnacle platform for debate on matters of global political concern. At no time in our recent history have global developments been as concerning as they are today. Global geopolitics and competition between global powers have complicated and severely undermined the global response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, they have caused severe anxiety and undermined coordinated responses to an, to an economic and social character that would have left us in a stronger position as a global collective. Your Excellencies, as the President in Office of the Organization of African, Pacific, and Caribbean States, an organization comprising 97 countries, some of whom are the most vulnerable and poorest, I have become acutely aware of global geopolitics and competition that is not focused on helping us better build a stronger, safer, healthier, and more prosperous world. What is equally important is that even after addressing the acute phase of the pandemic, we must all remain collectively committed to global recovery. Developing countries seeking to have the existing debt moratorium refined and extended to December 2021 and an early replenishment of the IMF Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust and the World Bank International Development Association, as well as an early decision on the special drawing rights. But Your Excellencies, I am confident that we have the answers to the challenges we face. The SDGs are a model for multilateral action which capture the common aspirations of mankind to end poverty, protect our, our planet's biosphere, and to ensure prosperity for all. The challenges that confront us today only serve to underscore the need to reaffirm our commitment to the implementation of the SDGs, particularly 
with regard to fighting poverty and inequality, but also our shared responsibility to effectively contribute to this common vision. Mr. President, turning to climate change, I believe Kenya's stance on climate change and the environment is known to all. Climate change can unpackage our efforts to attain the SDGs. Kenya acknowledges these disproportionate impacts of climate variability in small island developing states, as well as states with fragile ecological environments. In this regard, Kenya was honored to co-host the United Nations Secretary General's Climate Action Summit in September of last year, which resulted in landmark commitments as well as initiatives. Similarly, the interdependent crisis of the biodiversity less loss and ecosystem degradation requires urgent and collective action. Our global home that was teeming with millions of species of God-given creatures, both great and small, is slowly dying. Kenya once again calls for urgent collective action to halt the dissemination of our biodiversity. We must find a global balance between human beings and other creatures on our earth. We must put harmony between people and nature. Our world is yearning for us to stop its ruin. In this regard, we in Kenya look forward to the upcoming Biodiversity Summit that shall be held later. Ladies and gentlemen, as host to the United Nations Environmental Program and the UN Habitat, of which we are proud, Kenya calls for the expansion of the two programs their viability to harmonize and to domicile all environmental and human settlement issues in their rightful place, which is at their headquarters. Kenya remains committed to continue offering the global community a conducive environment to declare the mandate of these two important UN organizations, UNEP and UN Habitat. Let me also remind all of us, Mr. President, that Kenya and Portugal will co-host the second UN Oceans Conference in the second quarter of 2021. We welcome you all to participate at the highest levels in Lisbon as we strive to harness science and innovation to scale up our conservation and the sustainable use of our oceans and blue economy. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me pause at this moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you for electing Kenya to the Security Council for the 2021-2022 term. The vote was an overwhelming affirmation of the trust and confidence that many members have in Kenya. I wish to assure you that Kenya will deliver on our commitments to the Council under the mandate of the African Union. We will work closely with all member states to ensure that the Council discharges its mandate in an inclusive, responsive, and consultative manner because peace is a collective effort. Mr. President, Kenya has been a frontline state in global efforts to confront terrorism and violent extremism. We have consistently advocated for the need to build partnerships for a strategic and operational approach to prevent and to combat violent extremism, not just here in Kenya or our region, but globally. And even as we struggle 
with all other challenges of development and cooperation, we cannot afford to take our eyes over the ever-present danger of the existential threat of terrorism. Kenya was honored to have hosted the first ever African regional high-level conference on counterterrorism and prevention of violent extremism in July of last year. Kenya also welcomes the envisioned establishment of the UN Counterterrorism Program office here in Nairobi. As a country that has long contributed to global peacekeeping operations, it has been our experience that cooperation amongst various stakeholders, a clarity of mandate, appropriate training, and equipping of troops, an integration of conflict prevention, peacekeeping, and peace building measures, the participation especially of women, as well as the periodic reviews of the effectiveness of missions, greatly strengthens peacekeeping operations. Kenya will continue to advocate for inclusive, meaningful, triangular consultations between the Security Council, the UN Secretariat, and troop and police contributing countries. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, even though, the, even though the world has made great progress since the creation of this great body, the United Nations, 75 years ago, our present challenges may appear dispiriting and the journey ahead seem daunting and arduous. But existence is like a marathon of global proportions. I come from a country of marathoners, and I therefore appreciate the demands of endurance, teamwork, and persistence in conquering the road ahead. Together, I believe we can win this race. Mankind can triumph and secure peace and prosperity in a greater biodiversity for present and future generations. Finally, Mr. President, the Secretary, Gen the Secretary General's recent appeal for a global ceasefire also includes a humanitarian call for the rollback of international sanctions and to, re and to reinforce the efforts of vulnerable, fragile, and conflict-afflicted countries to deal with the impact of COVID-19. I state today that Kenya stands behind this initiative. And in this connection, I wish to make a special appeal for an end to the economic and commercial as well as financial embargo against Cuba, sanctions against Zimbabwe and Sudan, the United Nations provides us a platform, a platform to resolve age-old differences and unburden ourselves of these antiquated conflicts. It is also Kenya's desire to see at this critical and historical juncture an inspiration for peace between Palestine and Israel. Kenya calls for renewed and genuine international efforts to find a just and lasting solution to the conflict based on the existence of two states, the state of Israel and the state of Palestine, within the framework of the relevant United Nations pronouncements. I want to thank all of you for your attention. Thank you, and God bless you all. On behalf of the General Assembly, I want to thank the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya for his statement. Now, I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Namibia, 
to introduce the intervention of uh, the head of state.